very good afternoon. Welcome to Sunday Jazz in Wigan here at Welly at Servicemen's Club. It's great to see you all. Particularly a particular warm welcome to members of Wigan U3A who are here in increasing numbers again today, which is wonderful to see. And of course, to our regulars and to our patrons, a very warm welcome on a, a day perfect for indoor jazz. It's always great when you wake up on a sunny morning and you see rain. Um, if you're not playing cricket or rugby, but going to a jazz concert because, well, we're many people will head hopefully on such a, um, a, a rainy day but uh, whether it rains or sun shines the jazz here at uh, Wigan Jazz is always of the highest caliber and today is a double header which features in the second set the Wigan Youth Jazz Orchestra who recently were awarded first place in the junior section of the uh, Great Northern Big Band Festival which takes place in Sunderland you have to drive all the way to Sunderland to, uh, to perform in this. And if you're on at nine o'clock, it's an early start. But anyway, the Youth Jazz Orchestra have won that now on three consecutive occasions, possibly even four. And when I was director of the band, we won it as well. Um, and that's a good few years ago now. Talking of the youth band, it's great to welcome uh, a former member of the Wigan Youth Jazz Orchestra, who is a very quiet, shy, a uh, young man, well, you were just a boy really, Les, weren't you? You were a boy, and a wee lad, and we went to California. Les hadn't been in the band very long, and our first gig for Les uh, was in Los Angeles, and he thought he'd made it. We had to come back, of course, a few weeks later, but what a time we had, didn't we? And it's so great to see how Les's career has developed. He is a disciple of uh, uh, Bill Evans, that wonderful, very special piano player. Very few pianists play in the style of Bill Evans for a simple reason, because they can't. But Les is one of those who can and has dedicated his career, he's frowning, but I know he can, I've heard him do it. It's a great pleasure to welcome and to see Les. Uh, he's now uh, teaching all over the north of England as well, Les is like Leeds College of Music and Cheetham School of Music and uh, Royal Norton. Is it Chats? Ch Chatters? They've sacked him. Oh, I see. Well, uh, in a former life, Les used to teach at Cheetham. <laughs> nevertheless, he's earning a lot of money now playing. Yeah, apparently he's working in a garden centre now. Uh, so anyway, Les, it's great to see you. And the piano has been specially painted for today's gig. So, is that all right? And on Flugelhorn, somebody I've known for many years, we've done shows together and we share a passion for great trumpet players and a great passion for this wonderful music. Music in general, but particularly jazz. And we're very fond of uh, trumpet players and flugelhorn players like Freddie Hubbard. And uh, that's it, you, you don't need to say anymore. What we do actually, we need to mention Kenny Wheeler because Richard and myself also have a, a passion for the mu music of Kenny Wheeler and I had the great pleasure and honour of introducing Kenny in Toronto a few years ago on a very big concert that he did there and uh, what a thrill and uh, these things we talk about often but it's great to welcome Richard back. He also started life in the Youth Jazz Orchestra movement, not with Wigan but with the uh, Midland Youth Jazz Orchestra um, many moons ago but not, not too many. 1974, so it's quite a while ago. And then he actually guested also with the Doncaster Youth Jazz Orchestra as well, when they performed at places like the Nice Jazz Festival. You only did it there? All oh, right, well, you must have impressed them greatly, really. It's, anyway, this is an unusual setup. Very rarely do you get the opportunity to hear a duo. And again, the reason is most people can't play duo stuff. They just can't handle a gig without a bass and drums. And uh, even less without, you know, I mean, if you've no bass player, you, uh, and you're cheaper as well. Uh, that was, I forgot to tell you about the fee. <laughs> we haven't paid them yet, but we will be doing uh, at some point. Uh, do you take payment in scones and sandwiches? Because we've plenty of those to go around. Anyway, enough of me. Let's hand over to these incredible musicians. You're going to have a beautiful hour in the company of Richard Isles 
and let's just all sit back, enjoy it and dream. Thank you very much. Here's Richard. Thank you, Ian. Always a pleasure to be roasted by Ian Darrington before you play a single note of music. Yeah. Uh, Les doesn't actually work in a garden sense. I, I made that up. And there's other things I might make up as we go along, but please just excuse me. Um, so, it's fantastic. Thank you for such a warm welcome. Thank you to Ian for inviting us to play. It's brilliant. So, we're going to play a few tunes that you know and a couple of tunes that you won't know, but you think you'll know, because hopefully, you know, we listen to all the same music as you do, so when you're writing tunes, you, uh, you sort of write things that sound like other things, don't you? So hopefully you'll enjoy all the music that we'll play for you today. But we're gonna play a tune first that uh, I play it every single day. I love it, it's my absolute favorite tune, and it's called Body and Soul. So this is my version for today, the first time I played it today, and actually, I love playing the trumpet, mate. I do. I don't feel I'm very good at it, but I absolutely love it. But I'll probably play it again when I get home. Because I love it that much. So, uh, but I'll do it without Les next time and play a bit better, probably. Not because not of Les, because Les doesn't put me off or anything. But... You always say about the second attempt, don't you?
you very much. Well, I mean, you know, I play it, I play it thousands of times now. I still have no idea who wrote it. I can't remember. Is it Heyman and somebody in there? Younger this place. Johnny Green, thank you very much. And that's what somebody always says, Johnny. And, and then next time I forget again. <laughs> Useless. Give us a quiet time when you're listening. <laughs> It's like digital silence in between the tracks. That was a new thing, wasn't it? When CDs were invented, digital silence. So, you can be a bit noisy if you want. Um, we're going to play now a tune who I do know who wrote this one. This is uh, by somebody who I, this is a funny story. I did a dissertation. At the end of your time at college, you have to do a dissertation about something. And I did one on Cole Porter. So, uh, I, uh, I got a book out of the library about Cole Porter's life story and I copied it and stuff like that. <laughs> Actually, before we do that, I, did, I finished at Leeds College of Music and I failed. <laughs> Unbelievable. Failing there is impossible. <laughs> so I had to resit my dissertation. So I got, got a book out of the library of Cole Porter and uh, copied this sort of dissertation thing out of the book, really. And I was working with a well known comedian who I'm not going to tell you who that is. But I was constantly on the road doing this, and I was in the dressing room writing this thing. And eventually, I just about passed. But 40 years later, I've still got the book. <laughs> and I work there now as well. And going, every time I go into the library, I think, I've still got the book. The fine's going to be ridiculous. <laughs> so, we're going to play a tune by Cole Porter, and this is You'd Be So Nice to Come Home to.
thank you. You were so nice. Well, I'm not going to tune that. So it's time to introduce you to the members of the orchestra. <laughs> On piano, Les Chisnell. <laughs> Obviously, much like everything else, the music business has suffered a cost of living crisis. We're all suffering from it, aren't we? I, I do the big shopping at house, so I know the cost of everything. Tesco's, Aldi, Lidl, Sainsbury's, never been to any of them. Panland for me. <laughs> but uh, obviously it has really hit us, you know. Generally I would say the cost of uh, brass players and piano players has remained pretty stable, you know. I'm 5p dearer than I used to be. And Les is a uh, penny extra 6p. But he does have a lot of notes to look at, so he's, you know, it's worth every penny, you know. I mean, it gives me a bit of a migraine. Looking at all, I mean, I've only got three. <laughs> He's got give me that 88, 88 and a half, haven't you? Something like that. I mean, it's just impossible to know what the notes are, right? Fine. How does he do it? It's some, you could really do some sort of colour coding system. I think. <laughs> uh, letters, I do actually see that. I do it myself when I'm teaching. I've got a, a permanent marker pen. The schools love me. <laughs> so. Um, yes, we're, you know, cost of living crisis and all that, but anyway, when we're, uh, you know, at college, music college or whatever, actually what we do most of all when we're learning and we're studying all that, is just playing duos all the time, so this is something that we grow up doing, isn't it, Les, you know, I mean, when I was at Leeds College, there were quite a few good piano players, and you used to just grab them, go into the practice room and play tunes and stuff, and then that's, that's how we learn, really. You got, if you're lucky if you got bands together and learn that way as well, but mostly you do it in this setting, so it is something that we're uh, mostly because I actually do all with smaller lineups now, and I, I love it. It's really, really good, especially when you're playing with somebody as extraordinarily talented as Les. Give him another round of applause. Brilliant. 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 So we played a couple of tunes you know, and now we're going to play one that you don't know. But So I write tunes about my holidays, and uh, family holidays and things. And this one is somewhere in North Wales, I'm sure you've all been to, called Morph and Effing. Anybody been to Morph and Effing? Yeah, they need to work on their... Uh, they need a, is it Travago or something? They need to go on there. So, this is a bit of a boost. Go to Morph and Effing. It's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful beach and... Uh, there's one house on the beach, and there's actually a pub on the beach as well, which I've never been to. <laughs> but, uh, there is a pub. So this one's called Morphine.
thank you very much. So if that doesn't get five stars on uh, TripAdvisor, I don't know what does. <laughs> um, Now we're going to do a tune. This is an, a very old standard that I didn't know at all. Did anybody used to watch a television programme back in the 80s called The Twilight Zone? Yeah, all good. Oh yeah, a definite hand went up there. That excellent. Good. And uh, the Twilight, it was a really weird program about all these bizarre stories and stuff. I mean, I never used to really watch it much, but sometimes there wasn't much on. It was that on Newsnights, which was still on then. And uh, anyway, so there was a, a bit in the, in the uh, it was like a half an hour drama really, where there's this bit where this tune came on. It was Billy Holiday singing this song, and I thought, that's fantastic. So I looked into it, and it was a tune called Good Morning Heartache. Do you anybody know the tune Good Morning Heartache? It's a fantastic tune. And I've never heard Billy Holiday before either. And she's unbelievable, isn't she? She's so good, Billy Holiday. So this is our version of Good Morning Heartache via the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Thank <laughs>
Thank you. Isn't that lovely, that tune? I love that tune. Good morning, Hartink. You should have a listen to it. Go onto your YouTubes when you get home and have a listen to Billy Holiday singing that. Heartbreaking. Um, so, now we're going to do a tune by a very famous film star. Some of you might know who that is already. Any idea? No. It's the, as you can see, I, in the past I used to do a Robin Redford look-alike thing, obviously. <laughs> well, I was studying for George Clooney a few times. But uh, no, it's, it's not, none of those wrote fantastic jazz tunes. But Charlie Chaplin did, he wrote a, a beautiful tune. Anybody know what that tune is? Smile, yeah. What a beautiful tune that is. So we're going to play Charlie Chaplin's Smile. Is that alright, Les?
very much. Smile. That's a little bit true, isn't it? It, you know, you, you really play the music all these years, and the great thing about it is you get to play the tunes you really like, and you, you know, you really, and you, you discover loads of new tunes as you're, uh, you know, practicing and all that, and listening to all the, I've got thousands of records and CDs and stuff, there's so much new music on here all the time, so uh, if you're really lucky to play all this stuff. So now we're going to do another one of my tunes. <sighs> Sorry. Um, so, yeah, years and years ago, I used to, uh, I mean, when I left college and all that, when I, well, when I, was like, I used to write tunes and all that, and you, you do your best in all that. And you, know, you think, at the time, you think, oh, these are great tunes, better than the Beatles. And things like that. So, I remember I did my first ever concert, this was before I met Les, I think Les was probably about eight years old at this point, so it was. But I was doing the first concert with a brilliant guitarist who lives locally, but he's absolutely man called Mike Walker. Many of you probably know Mike Walker, he's fantastic. And the first concert, we played all my tunes, and Mike played, and I'd not done a gig with him before, but we had rehearsed, and he was pretty impressive. And then we did the concert, and he was like, oh, he's, he's good. It was unbelievably good. And uh, after the concert, Mike came up to me and said, uh, Richard, I need to know where you about your tunes. I thought he was going to say, oh, I really like them or something like that. Said, They're not very good. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, he didn't leave me at that. He gave me some tips about things. And then I went away and wrote some more tunes. And this is what, the next one we're going to play is one of the tunes that I wrote. And it's called Old Friend. And uh, Mike likes this one. So, that's good. This one's called Old Friend.
Thank you very much. Uh, thank you one more time. Uh, so we're, we're going to play one more for you, uh, but uh, before we do that, I'd just like to say what an amazing thing Wigan Youth Jazz Orchestra is. It's known nationally, internationally as well as one of the great bands. I was lucky to play in the... Uh, Middle Youth Jazz Orchestra when I was like about, I don't know, 13 or something. And then uh, one of my friends got into the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. So I played with them for a bit when I was about 15 or something. And, uh, and then I didn't do it again for a while because of uh, I think I was too good for it. <laughs> At the time. They didn't understand me. They didn't understand it. Anyway, so uh, I did the National Youth Jazz Orchestra. And then later on when I went to college, as uh, Ian said earlier, I played with the, uh, the uh, Doncaster Youth Jazz Orchestra and went to the Nice Jazz Festival and that was amazing. But I never got to play with the Wigan Youth Jazz Orchestra because I wasn't good enough. But I practiced and I practiced. You know, I thought I'd play with my Joe, die Joe, nigh Joe. I need Y Joe, I need that W. Anyway, I was about 36 years old. Ian asked me to go to Aberdeen with them and play with the Wigan Youth Jazz Orchestra, and I did it. <laughs> and it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And Ian was directing the band. Uh, and since then, Dave's took over the band. And it is an absolute, it is one of the best youth jazz orchestras in the country. Yeah, you should all be really proud of them because they're fantastic. They've got such a history. And every time they play, it's absolutely fantastic. So, how about a big band for, for the big hand of the band that's coming? I must stress, I'm really not doing that. There's so many great players from the Wigan Jazz Orchestra, so uh, yeah, that's fantastic. So, we're going to play one more tune for you, and this is a tune uh, that's sort of like, hopefully, full of a bit of optimism. Chet Baker used to sing a song called Look for the Silver Lining, and uh, we're not playing that. <laughs> so. We're going to do a tune called Every Silver Lining. Thank you very much for coming to listen to us. You've been absolutely unbelievable. It's so quiet. I mean, when I'm at home practicing, I have YouTube on. It's quite noisy. So, uh, thank you very much for being a brilliant audience for me and Lex. We really, really enjoyed it.
Thank you very much. Let's hear again for these two very special musicians. Absolutely no hiding place on a big like that. Richard Isles on Flugel Hall and Les Kirchner on the piano. And a couple of things I want to mention about Richard, if you don't know this. Uh, one is that um, in around about 1989 or maybe slightly later, to, yeah, <laughs> we produced a, uh, a video um, <laughs> And uh, we didn't have a title for it, and somebody said, I know. I know. You know, when Richard takes the band, he says, right, guys, let's take it from the top. In a, in a, that's not a very good brummy accent, is it? Ta <laughs> let's call it Take It From The Top after Richard. So if you ever see it around, and it's called Take It From The Top, and it was dedicated to, well, the, the title came from you. But more importantly, and far more impressively, um, in 2001, 2002, I travelled to South Africa and did a, a big uh, research project on jazz education. And I went all over South Africa and met some wonderful people. And uh, as a result, I invited two of the bands to come to Wigan. And I got funding for this from the Arts Council. And uh, we decided we would write a suite and have it recorded. But of course, I wasn't going to write it because I couldn't. Uh, but I knew somebody at could, so I got on the phone, I said, Richard, I've got a job for you. He said, well, I said, I want you to write a, a 45 minute suite all about musicians from South Africa. He says, I've never been. I said, well, I can't send you there, but I can. <laughs> anyway, you produce this incredible suite of music and it's here on CD. And uh, the kids from Johannesburg, the kids from East London in, uh, in South Africa, they came over and combined uh, with the Wigan Youth Jazz Orchestra. We did a joint concert at Wigan Pier. 500 people came to the, uh, to the uh, premiere. Some of you were there, I know, and enjoyed it. And Richard was, you were there. You, you, you remember it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, right. Are we? <laughs> We had the most incredible night, and then we, re we recorded it and released it, and it was just an absolute thrill. That music's still in existence, it still gets played in Cape Town a lot, and uh, I'm sure you... Dear, yeah, good. I'm sure you get the royalties from it. Yeah. Nothing, oh well, it's life. But anyway, it was just such a thrill to be involved with Richard on that project. He did the most incredible job. The only thing was that the kids from South Africa only ever played in C, F and G, and Richard's put them through hell with uh, A flat, B flat, D flat, G flat, all those keys, and they loved you for it. But we, we had the most wonderful time, and I just wanna, uh, well, I'm, I'm not gonna give you this, because you've already got several copies of it, but just wanted to raise that uh, uh, publicly and let you know that this is the person who composed that wonderful music. Richard Isles, and uh, thank you very much for today. Oh, no,